Hey guys, this is Andrew with rockclass101.com, and in this week's ukulele lesson, we're going to be learning finger picking etude number 22. So, as you guys heard, this is an absolutely beautiful tune that Evan wrote for us, and as this is part of our etude series, that implies that we're going to be talking in detail about one concept. And this time around, it's going to be a little bit different because we're going to be covering music theory. So if you are interested in writing your own pieces or you're interested in learning a little bit more about how we compose these tunes, that's what we're going to be talking about in this lesson. But if you're not interested in that, that's okay too, because we're also going to be learning how to play the entire song. So if you do want to get the tabs to print off and follow along with, that's going to be available at this page, or you can go to the site rockclass101.com, do a search for finger picking etude number 22. And don't forget too, on that page is the on-screen tab viewer. Now this is a really cool feature where you can hit play, watch the tabs scroll across in real time. You can highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down to any speed you wish. Just a really great asset in learning this song that much easier. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and kick into this lesson. So there's a few things that we need to cover before we actually jump in and start learning it. The first thing I want to talk about is the right hand picking approach. So this is a song that lends itself really, really well to, I would say, either a four or a three finger picking approach. Now, personally, I'm going to use a four finger approach, which means our thumb gets string four, index gets string three, middle gets string two, ring gets string one. But you could also use a three finger approach where thumb would get string four and three, index gets two, and then middle gets string one. So pick the one that's most comfortable for your playing style. But if you're new to both styles and you wanna learn more about them, as well as just using the thumb, then I'll put a link in the description box below to our finger picking concepts course, which covers all three approaches and has a lot of exercises for each approach. Now, speaking of theory, we're going to be talking about how this song was composed. So I'd also recommend if you're brand new to understanding music theory to check out our music theory course. This is going to lay down a strong foundation of the fundamentals. Because as we talk through this lesson on how parts were written, what concepts they were used to write them, I'm going to be talking with the assumption that you have some basic understanding of music theory. So if you're brand new to it, check out that course and I'll put it in the description box below. And if you want to go even a step further, some of the concepts we're going to be talking about in this lesson, they're going to be explained in another course that we have, which is called How to Write a Song on the Ukulele. So easy name to remember. That course is going to do a huge in-depth analysis on some of the theory concepts that we talk about. So if you really want to dive super in-depth, then I'd recommend checking out that course as well. All right, so let's go ahead and kick into the lesson. So the first thing that we want to look at is we want to know what we're playing, and that comes down to form. So this is a very standard song. This is an A-A-B-A -A -A form. That means that we have an A melody and a B melody, the A melody goes twice, then the B melody, and then back to the A melody. So very typical, very standard form. Now the next thing we want to look at is what key we're playing out of. And the key is G major. Now that's important because when we go to the B melody, we're actually going to be modulating, which is a fancy way to say we're doing a key change. Now we'll talk about that key change when we get to the B melody. But for now, let's just focus on playing out of G. So I'm going to play the first couple bars, but I'm only going to play the chords that happen in the first couple bars. And we're going to talk about what concept was used to write this chord progression. And that concept is called voice leading. It's pretty cool, so check it out. So really pretty progression. Now, three out of those four chords are very simple basic chords that we probably all know by now. So the first one is G, the second one is G major 7, the third one is G7, and the fourth one may be new, it's a G at 11, which is a fancy way to say it has an open C. Now let's look at just the first three chords. So the first one, starting on G, this is comprised of 1, 3, and 5, so it's G, B, and D. 
Keep an eye on the fourth string, the third string, and the first string, okay? Those notes remain constant. Now, when I go to the second chord, G major seven, the only thing that happens is that this ring finger goes down a half step to an F sharp. So we are introducing an extra note into the mix. And that gives us a new chord, G major seven. So you wanna keep this movement in mind, right? So starting on the first chord again, we had a G. All we did was we went down a half step on the second string, which introduced a different note which was an F sharp. Now when we go to the third chord, G7, we're gonna go down another half step. But let me switch the fingering around. But these remain constant, right? Open, second, second. So the only thing that changed now was that we have a first fret on string two, which is an F natural. So now the chord tones that we are playing are G, B, D, and F, which gives us the formula of a dominant chord. So if I play through all three of these, and I highlight the moving note, then that, in a nutshell, is what voice leading is. It tells us that we have to go from one chord to the next, by keeping a lot of chord tones that are common intact. So boom, boom, boom. But we're going to change one note, either remove or add a note by a series of a half or a whole step. And when we do that, we get a chord progression that goes from one to the next in one of the most beautiful sounding ways possible. So a cool way to write songs, uh, one that always comes in mind that starts with the same idea as the first three chords is Sixpence None the Richer. Probably don't remember the name of the band, but that's the name of the band. It was a huge hit in the 90s called Kiss Me. So the beginning of that song, uh, the little guitar strum part uses that same chord progression and it sounds really, really pretty, really, really cool. So check out that song if you want to hear it in a pop tune. But now that we have looked a little bit about the theory of writing, so we have examined that this chord progression is written using voice leading, let's actually learn how to play it. So I'm gonna play bar one and then we'll break it down and learn it. Sounds like this. Okay, so let's tackle that. All right, so starting on the basic G and from our rhythmic standpoint, this is actually really important. The first, second, and third bars, they're going to be identical rhythm throughout the entire bar. And to go one step further, if you look at the first half of the bar, so beats one and two, the right hand picking approach is actually identical across every chord. So check this out. I'm gonna play beat one and two in bar one and then I'll play beat one and two in bar two, and then beat one and two in bar three. And you'll see that the right hand is the same picking pattern. So there's bar one, bar two, and bar three. Okay, so let's break down what this right hand picking pattern is. But that tells us that if you get it down once, you've got it for the next few bars. So go ahead and make the basic G. And I'd actually recommend strumming down with the thumb because it's gonna produce a softer, sweeter sounding tone than if you strum with the nail of the index. So that's gonna be a little bit brighter, a little bit harsher. And this song has kind of a really soft, uh, beautiful sound to it. So I would strum down with the thumb. So after we strum down, we're gonna play string four, string three, and then pluck three and two. So we have strum, four, three, pluck. After you pluck, you're going to lift the middle up. You're gonna play open A, then open G, and then put the middle back down, play the second fret on string A. So if you put that together, you have. And if I count it out, I have one and a two E and a. So one and a two E and a. Okay, so it's eighth followed by sixteenths. One and a two e and a. 
So if you're new to counting rhythms, I'll put a lesson that introduces you to rhythmic notation, but honestly, there is no better way to really understand how rhythm and timing connects than to learn to read standard notation. So if you want to dive super in depth into understanding rhythm and really working on timing as well, then check out our reading course. But going back to this, so we have strum, four, three, pluck, one, four, one, that's the right hand pattern. So remember how I said that repeats for bar one, two, and three, the first half. So strum, four, three, pluck, one, four, one. If I play the first half of bar two, strum, four, three, pluck, one, four, one. The first half of bar three, strum, four, three, pluck, one, four, one. It's the same right hand pattern for the next three bars for the first half. So get that right hand pattern memorized and then you're just going to apply it to the chord changes for the next bars. All right, so let's look at the second half of bar one. So it goes to G major seven. So we'll just lay flat on the second fret, strings one, two, and three. Again, we can strum this and we can use the thumb, but this time around, we're going to hold that for three fourths of the third beat. So one E and a. Uh. So on the a, uh, is when you're going to pluck string three. And you can really hear it, bum, ba, da, da. So it's a quick hit at the end of that beat. One E and a two and, well actually we're on beat three and four, so three E and a four and. Okay, so bum, da, da, da. So it also helps to sing it. If you can sing it, yeah, I can play it. So you're gonna go strum, then hit string three, then you're gonna pluck one and two together, and then hit the open G. So, bum, da, da, da. Okay, if we put that entire bar together, it sounds like this. Okay, let's give that a shot. Here we go. Three, four, strum. Ba, dum, ba, da, do, do, da. Boo, ba, do. And if I count it, we have two, three, four, one, and a two E, and a three, a four, and... And if we try one more time, no counting, no singing along, we have one, two, three, four. Okay, and if I'm going any bit too fast, you can use these instructions to slow the YouTube player down, but the on-screen tab viewer that's available for premium members will let you set it to any speed that you wish. So you can increment, incrementally set it. So if you're at like 67%, you can set it to that and loop the bars and highlight. Just a great way to really get these uh, rhythms down pat. Okay, so the other thing I wanna talk about is how you're playing it. You know, this is a beautiful slow tune. So you want your playing to reflect that. So just a soft approach for plucking. but you can also accent some notes. Like to me, I hear beat four feels like it should have a little bit more of a pop. So listen to beat four. I'll play through the first couple bars. All right, so I can just accent beat four, just pluck a little bit harder. And that kind of helps break up the monotony of finger picking, keeping it uniform, makes it a little a little pop in there. So going into our second bar sounds like this. Here's a little pop. <laughs> so we're kicking out with G7, so just standard way to make G7. Remember the right hand is the same for the first half, so you have strum, four, three, but here's where it gets a little bit different. At this point, I'd recommend taking the pinky, put it down on the third fret of string two. So in essence, you can see that you just canceled out the G7 and you went back to the basic G, but we're using a different finger to fret it, okay? So you have strum, four, three, put the pinky down on that G note, third fret of string two. You're gonna pluck three and two. Then again, we're going to lift that second fret up this time it's with the ring finger. You're gonna play the open A, open G, and then put it back down and play the second fret of string one. 
So remember, the right hand is the same pattern, but it's a little bit trickier because we're switching from G7 to G, partially in the, in the middle of this finger picking pattern. So strum, four, three, back to basic G, pluck, lift up, one, four, put back down, back to string one. So calling out the right hand, strum, four, three, pluck, one, four, one. So same right hand, but get the changes down that happens. So just think G7 to G, and that'll help you memorize that change. So looking at the second half, here's where the fourth chord comes into play. So we have second pinky ring making the G. What you're going to do is you're going to lift that middle finger up and we have a G at 11. So open, open, third, second. Okay, so this 11 is just the C note. It's the fourth, G, A, B, C. So strum, three, pluck, four. That's identical as well to the last bar. So we have strum, hit string three on the A, ah, then you're going to pluck on beat four, one and two, and pluck harder to get that pop, and then hit string four. So if you put that bar together slow, sounds like this. Okay, let's give it a shot. Two, three, four. And if we backtrack, let's try bar one into two. One, two, ready, go. So very, very pretty. Next, we're going to a G augmented. So it has a sharp five in there. So we're sharpening that D to make it a D sharp. So this chord is going to be open, third, third, second, and I'm using middle ring index. Now, this chord is still doing the voice leading movement, right? But this time around, it's going to transition to a G. And Evan, if you watch the performance, switches to the basic G fingering. But I, sometimes I feel like I hear like that, unwanted string noise when I do a switch like that. So. I would actually recommend when you're working on this bar to just move the middle finger back a half step. It's gonna be really kind of awkward, but you can see open second, third second puts us back at basic G. So you may wanna just practice augmented, move down a half step to regular G, move back up, augmented, G. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Put it into a time frame like that, it'll help you tackle muscle memory. So right hand, guys, it's identical. This one's actually just like the first bar where we don't have to do any movement. So strum, four, three, pluck, one, four, one. Well, any movement other than the lifting up for the index finger, that second fret. But you get what I'm trying to say. Strum, four, three, pluck, lift the index up, open A, G, put it back down, second fret. So strum, four, three, pluck, one, four, one. Okay, the second half, this is where that transition happens. So just drop the middle finger down to the second fret. So beat three, strum, hold it for three E end on the A, uh, pluck string three. This time around, you're going to pluck three and two on beat four, and then hit the open G after. So you have, so bum, da, da, da. Okay, so strum, three, pluck, four. Let me clean that up. Strum, three, pluck, four. If you put that bar together, guys, you get... Let's try that bar together. One, two, ready, go. One, and a two, E, and a three, a four, and... Awesome. Now going into the last bar, this is going to be ending number one. So our fourth bar is ending number one. So it's going to sound like this. So let's tackle what's happening here, but first let's talk about the theory side. So if you've studied harmony, you know that in the key of G, you're supposed to have an A minor, not an A major. 
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put up the fourth bar on the screen, I think this side. If we look at this chord progression, we're going from A to a D7 sus4 to a D7. So just think of it simply as A to D7. And then, since this is ending one, you see the repeat sign. You're going to be transitioning back to bar one, which is technically bar five. But it's going to transition back to G. So your chord progression, A to D7 to G. Now that sounds really nice, but it still presents an issue because, hey, A is not in the key of G. So what gives? Well, this chord progression is actually what's called a 5 of 5 movement. So first thing we have to recognize is what is 5 to 1? Okay, and let's look at the key we're in. Let's look at... Actually, you know what? Let's make this really simple. Let's think of it in terms of playing out of C major, right? Because C major is probably the key most of us are most familiar with playing out of because, well, it has no sharps or flats. Okay, so let's look at C major. So I'll write out C major above. You can see that it's simply C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Okay, now the first, the one chord for C is just going to be a C major. But the five chord is a G7. So that same dominant that we've been playing. Okay, now if I get rid of these top two strings, just listen to these two notes play together. It's an F note and it's a B note. They sound very dissonant, right? Well, that's because they are known as an interval of a tritone. A tritone is three whole steps apart. So there's one whole step, two whole step, three whole steps. That's a B note, so an F and a B. That sounds very unpleasurable to my ear, dissonant, right? That wants to be resolved. Well, if this is the five chord, G7, the five chord in a classic cadence, a classic resolution goes five to one. G7 needs to be resolved to the one chord, which is C. So five, one, boom. Listen to how nice that sounds. In a nutshell, simply explained, what's happening here is that this tritone in G7, what's going to happen is that this note, this F, is going to get resolved down a half step to an open E, while this B is going to get resolved up a half step to a C note. So you have F getting resolved down to an open E, and B getting resolved up to a C. Now, C and E is a major third. So a major third, C and E, that's the one chord. In its simplest terms, it's tension and release. An interval of a major third is a lot stable. It's much more stable than a tritone, right? Tension, release. So five to one is the classic way to end a song. How many songs have you played where it's just something like that? Just a cliche classic way to end it. It's because it has tension in the five chord and it provides release in the one chord. So going back to this tune. So we have that progression of A to D to G. Okay, so we need to think of the D chord. What is the five in D? D, E, F, G, A. Okay, so A is the five of D. That's why it's okay to put in the key of G, even though A major is not in G, because we're not really thinking of the key right now. We're doing five to five. Okay, so if A is the five of D, D is the five of what? G. So A is the 5 of D, and then D is the 5 of G. So in a nutshell, all we're doing is we're resolving from 5 chord to 1, and then again 5 to 1, right? So A is 5 of D, D is 5 of G, right? G, A, B, C, D. 
So that's what's happening in this section right here. It's just five of five. So a cool way to uh, throw in chords that aren't in the key that you're playing out of, but a cool way to make it work. Okay, so let's learn this bar. So we're starting off with an A, just stock A. And very similar to what we first played in terms of rhythm, just one little tiny difference, but we have one and uh, so you're gonna go strum, string four, string three. Then on beat two, you're gonna play the open E, back to string four, and then use your, I would say, pinky or your ring, should be, either one is fine. I'm gonna use my pinky to play the third fret of string two. So one and a two E and, calling out the right hand pattern, strum, four, three, two, four, and then back to two. Okay, sounds like that. One and a two E and. So at this point, you're going to lift the index finger up and you're gonna strum a D7 with a suspended four. So just strum all four strings and then get rid of the pinky, put the ring finger on the second string, second fret. And it's what we call the Hawaiian D7 chord. So in this section, even though they're quarter notes, you don't have to play this bar strictly to the tempo. You don't have to be. If you listen to Evan's performance, he uses a, a bit of rubato here, so. You can hear that D7, sus4, and D7, I just kind of played way more chilled out, right? So, or I guess drawn out would probably be a better way. So, you know, you don't have to be one and a two e and three, four, bum, and then continue, right? You can be ba da 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 la da and then back into tempo, right? So that's a cool way to throw in a little bit of rubato, which again means that we don't have to strictly adhere to the tempo. And that's kind of a little tool that you can do to increase the playing with filling. But make sure you do it in a natural way. You don't want to play the whole song with like completely ignoring rhythms. Then it sounds like you just have no sense of timing. So it's, it's a give and take with that. A little is a lot. All right, so let's try those last three bars. Or I'm sorry, last two bars, so bar three and four. So here we go, one, two, ready, go. And all four bars, one, two, ready, go. So at this point, you're gonna go back and you're gonna play bar one, two, and three again. But in the context of the tune, it's really bar five, six, and seven. So you're back through the G, to the G major seven, to the G seven, to the G add 11, to the G augmented, to the G. So you're playing those three bars again, and then you're jumping to ending two, which would be bar eight. And it's going to sound like this. It's the same chord progression as before, but it's just a different pattern. Let me try again, a little bit cleaner. So we have da 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 ba da. Very simple rhythms. So strum the A, then hit string four, go to that Hawaiian D7, strum four to two, and then use the pinky to play the third fret of string two. And then at this point, you can just drop that middle finger down and play open second third, so it's a G. Five. So rhythmically we have one and two and three. So at this point you can see we have that little 16th hit at the end, three E and uh. So you're gonna hit string three and then pluck string two on beat four. So bum ba da. 
So together, one and two and three, a four. Let's try that bar. Ready, go. One and two and three, a four. Nice. So that'll complete melody A. So remember, you play those first four bars. Bar four was the ending one. Then you go back, you play the same first three bars, and then go into ending two. So if I breeze through that, it's going to sound like this. Ending one. Maybe slow down and repeat. like a little retardando in that as well so you can you know throw in whatever kind of tempo change you wish but do it sparingly though do it sparingly okay so now we're into melody b melody b is four bars right so remember a a b a is the form so a is four bars repeat it twice that's why we had eight bars and then melody b four bars and when we go back into melody a we will have another four bars so very short little tune so melody B, the big thing here is that we have a key change. So we're modulating to the parallel minor. Now, a lot of times we hear about major and minor, right? So when we hear G major, we have G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. So if I play that, it sounds like this. Okay, so there's G major. This is the do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, da, right? Thing you sing in grade school. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. And most of the time, when you think of minor, you're thinking of relative minor. So that means you're playing this exact same scale. But this time around, instead of starting on G, you would be starting on E, which is the sixth degree, and you'd be playing from there. And when you do so, you're playing the same seven notes, but you're starting and ending on E instead of G, and thus it creates a different home bass sound, as in E is the home bass. And what that does is it creates an overall difference in the timbre, in that it sounds more sad instead of major. So if I play the E minor scale, it's going to sound like this. Contrast that again to G. So remember, it's the same seven notes, but we're starting on either G or E. Versus. So one of them sounds a lot sadder than the other. So the big takeaway of all of this is that we are going into a different key and this key has seven notes that are different from the ones that comprised either G major or its relative minor which was E minor. This key we're playing out of is G minor which has two flats and when you harmonize these seven notes you get a different chord progression than you would if you harmonized G major or E minor. So that's the big grasp that we need to see for this transition to the B melody, is that we're going to a different key that has a different harmonization because it has seven different notes. So if I play the chord progression, which comprises the first two bars of melody B, it's going to sound like this, and it's a simple walk down in G minor. It's going to go the 6 to the 5 to the 4 to the 3 chord. Sounds like this. Really pretty. So very pretty, and you can also hear that it's the same rhythm that's played throughout the, those two bars, and the right hand is the same picking approach. 
So really simple and easy to learn. So we're going to start with an E flat. So make that basic G chord, move it up the neck until it hits 10, 11, 10. Now all this is using the cage method, which tells us or shows us that we can take these basic chord shapes, we can move them up the neck until they become other chords. And in doing so, one of the benefits is that you can create beautiful harmonies. So say you're at a jam with somebody and everyone's playing a C chord. Well, you could play that C chord using the G chord shape up the neck. So while everyone's strumming down here, you can play beautiful harmony right here. So if you're new to studying how to move chords up the neck till they become other chords, check out our lesson on the cage method. Super duper useful. Okay, so back to 10, 11, 10 with the G chord shape. Rhythmically wise, we have one, a two, and. So we can go strum, three, pluck, and then hit string three again. Strum, three, pluck, three. So one, a two, and. Now for our next chord, we're going to a D minor. So again, we want to think of the G chord shape, right? If you were to transition the G chord to the G minor, that's the stock shape that we're gonna be using. So just this stock little minor chord shape for G minor. But we're gonna move it up the neck again, and we're gonna place it on nine, 10, eight. So that's going to be middle on nine, ring on 10, index on eight. This whole time we've been ignoring string four. So look at the movement though. You left off, started, or you started on 10, 11, 10 for E flat. You're gonna to have to go down a half step and you're going to flip flop those fingers to get to the minor chord shape. So nine, 10, eight. So 10, 11, 10, go down a half step, switch to the minor shape, nine, 10, eight. But the right hand is the same, strum, three, pluck, three. Okay, so if we try that bar together, we have You can pop that beat two and beat four. It sounds really cool. One, a two, and three, a four, and. And if you want to go a step further, you can add a little bit of vibrato. And that'll make it shine just a little bit more. So if you're new to vibrato, I'll put a link to a lesson on it in the description box below. So again, let's uh, give this one a shot, you and I. So we have three, four, one, a two, and three, a four, and nice. Now from here, keep that minor shape intact. Just go down a whole step. So this time you're gonna be on seven, eight, six. We have a C minor, so same approach, strum, three, pluck, three. And then we're going to revert back to the G shape, this time on the five, six, five. And that'll give us our last chord for this key, which is B flat. So if you put that together, guys, you've got very, very pretty. And it just walks down the harmonization of G minor. So six, five, four, three. So let's actually give it a shot. Let's try those two bars together. So bum, ba, da, da. Let's try that speed. Ready, go. Bum, ba, da. So at this point, we're gonna revert back to the original key, and all you're going to be doing is you're going to be taking that B flat, go down a half step, so keep that G chord shape intact, but this is an A, right? So G go up a whole step becomes an A. So here's what this measure sounds like. So a really cool little walk up. So starting with the A, we're gonna go strum, three, pluck, three. So the same movement as before, right? One, a two, and. So what happens that's new starts on beat three. It's gonna sound like this. So you're going to strum that chord, then you're going to pluck one and two, and then hit string three. So strum, pluck, three. So three and a. Uh, at this point, take the pinky, put it down on the fifth fret of string one, pluck one and two, hit string three again, and then pluck string one and slide up to seven. 
so you can get rid of the chord. Let's put that into context because it makes more sense if we can hear the second half. So we have bum ba da 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 da, rhythmically wise, three and a four e and, three and a four e and, real slow, three and a four e and. So again, breaking it down, strum, pluck three, put the pinky down, pluck three, slide. Okay, let's give it a shot. Slow, one, two. Strum, pluck three, pluck three, slide. Put that entire bar together. Remember the same pattern for the first half. Ready, go. You can kind of hear what I'm doing as well. I'm starting to pluck with a little bit more volume, right? Da, ba, ba, dum, ba, da, 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 da. So I want to kind of just build up because this is kind of like the climax of the tune, which is going to be on the next bar. And then it's going to die back down a little bit. So let me play those last couple bars to end this B melody. So we kind of want to just build it up a little bit and then let it die back down so we can go back into that beautiful A melody. So for the next bar, it's just going to go to a D and we're going to bar flat on the second fret, add the ring, sorry, pinky finger to five on string one. And we're just going to be strumming and then plucking out of this chord. So four, three, two, one, back to string four. And then at that point, get rid of the pinky, make a basic dominant, so D7. So one and a two E and three, four. It's a very simple strum. Four, three, two, one, four, strum, the D7. So let's try that bar. Three, four, strum. Four, three, two, one, four, strum. Okay, so if we try those last couple together, let's give it a shot. So here we go. Three, four. And the entire B melody. Ready, go. Nice. So after that, you're back into the A melody, and the first few bars, plus the start of the fourth bar are pretty much identical to bars five, six, seven, and eight of the previous A melody, so the first time through. So you're back into G7, augmented, and then here's the last bar. So that same little walk up that we had for ending to A, D7, and then to the third fret. And then it also goes to the G5, but it has this cool little uh, picking pattern to end the tune. So let me play the last bar. In here I put a little retardando, and we can also put a little fermata on the end of two. So you start with the same as before, A, then string four, D7, strum four to two, and then the third fret. Put a little fermata there, but you want to start the retardando on the A. And then here's the new part. Okay, so I'm going to make the G chord again with two, four, and then ring. But first, you're going to start with the ring up. So you're going to strum four to two, then play string four, string three, string two. So all sixteenths, three E and uh, then for the next hit, so the start of the fourth beat, we're actually gonna do a 30 second note. So we're gonna do a quick hammer on, open to second, and then follow it up with sixteenths, four, three, two. So you have, ba -dum, bum, bum, bum. 
So hammer, four, three, two. So try just that part by itself. But if you put it from th beat three together, sounds like that. So we have strum, four, three, two, hammer, four, three, two. And this whole time you can do a little retardando, so. Fermata means to hold. Okay, and the last chord, higher voice of a G. So lay flat on seven, strings one, two, and three, pinky on 10, string one, open G. So for this, you can even fermata the last note if you want. You don't have to rush to the last chord. But let's give it a shot and we'll try to keep it a little bit more steady with the rhythm, but keep those alterations in mind when you're actually performing it. So here we go, three and four and one and two and three and a four e and a one. So very sterile when you play it, you know, in perfect timing. So definitely want to throw in the retardando and the fermatas to make it a little bit prettier, especially for an ending. But that's it, guys. So that t second time, or this last time that you go through melody A, so A, A, B, A, you're only playing those four bars, and well, if you count the last one, that would be the fifth bar to end it. But that's the entire tune. So this lesson was a little bit unique in that we talked a lot about how it was composed instead of just focusing on learning to play it. So a really, really cool lesson for kind of starting to think about what we're doing instead of just memorizing stuff, right? So once you start diving into learning a little bit about what you're playing instead of just playing, you know, you can open up a whole new door of possibilities. And it's not only a door that opens up to writing your own compositions, but it's also a door that explains, you know, why is this a G7? Stuff as simple as that, like, why do I put my fingers there and that's a G7? And why is this not a G7? You know, why is that an A7? You know, so you start to open up these little doors and then it leads to bigger doors. So if you're jamming and somebody goes, hey, solo over this, you know, that's another door that opens up, you know? So you start to learn how to play over chord progressions as well. And then that leads to other doors. <laughs> so you see, it's just, it's like, how far down the rabbit hole do you want to go? So if you want to learn more about music theory, then I would highly encourage you to start with our music theory course. I think I've ran out of chords, so I'll put it in the description box below. It's a great introduction in establishing a strong foundation in theory. So definitely check that out. If you want to dive deep into songwriting, then check out the th the How to Write a Song on the Ukulele. That's a course that goes even more in depth, but I wouldn't start on that if you're brand new to music theory. And last but not least, if you do want to get the tabs to print out, keep for your records for this tune, you can do so at this link or by going to the site rockclass101.com, doing a search for finger picking etude number 22. Don't forget that that on-screen tab viewer was also on that page, that interactive tab player where you can hit play, watch the tab scroll across in real time. You can highlight bars, loop sections, slow it down, all that fun jazz that was also available as well. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment in the YouTube box below or to write a post on our forum. Always happy to help any way that I can. I know theory stuff can be confusing at times, so uh, happy to help clarify anything that may have been a little bit confusing. And uh, again, I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.